This video was brought to you by Marcus Biel, Elbil Mac, Abadur Planner, Stolenberg, Camp Power, and Biel Componente. Yo, what's up? Today I'm gonna show you guys how freaking fast the Audi Q6 e-tron is charging. It can, by specification, hit 270 kilowatt, but I actually hit 285 kilowatt. So okay, let's roll the tape. I compared it against the G9, which is the closest competitor there. It's also an SUV and big battery and charges like a boss. But you see the G9, I can hit the 315 kilowatt, which is higher than the Q6 e-tron. But the, six, the Q6 is even in the lead because it ramped up faster than G9. But also the G9 can maintain that 300 and whatever plus for not too long and then drop below the speed of the Q6 and you see Q6 is pumping in 285 kilowatt and it actually maintains the lead for a little bit. I also include EV9 because it's a SUV similar size similar class and also a big battery and then we have the Q8 e-tron you know the one that uh, they might consider discontinued. I also included a Model S well, but it could be also be a Model X of course Plaid or, or Palladium in the mix so a bunch of SUVs have a big 100 kilowatt hour batteries. Okay back to the top then there were interesting things going. Uh, now the e Tron starts uh, trotting a little bit but still maintaining okay speed and then G9 is actually uh, right in the lead a little bit in front of the Q6 and then EV9 um, has a little bit flatter but slower curve than the smaller batteries like uh, the EV6 and the Ionic 5 but uh, I don't want to include them because the 100 kilowatt hour is the one we should compare against the other cars here. Maybe the smaller battery in the EV6 charges faster because of different chemistry, but um, uh, we have to compare SUVs with SUVs, right? Big, big cars. And then what the heck is going on with the e-tron, um, the, the Q8 e-tron then down there? Uh, not much, somewhat disappointing speed despite that it has a big battery. Um, one theory is that the, the reason why the Q8 has a bigger battery or, or, you know, bigger, well, maybe they have higher energy density, but at the cost of uh, C rating, so they cannot charge fast like a boss before. We've seen this before with the classic Ionic versus the Ionic 38 kilowatt hour. With a bigger battery, suddenly it could charge a lot slower. Maybe they had to sacrifice charging speed versus energy density. Who knows? And maybe that's also the case with EV9 versus uh, EV6 also. Right? But okay, back to the top 10. What the heck is going on there? Uh, G9 is still in the lead, but the Q6 is right behind it. Well, actually not really right behind it. Oh, oh but the G9 start trottling. Oh, shit. But this is time for the Q6 to maybe get back in the lead again. Wait, who's leading? Okay, G9 is first, Q6 is second, and then EV9 is uh, third. The 800 volt cars are on the top. Oh man, simply amazing. And then the 400 volt cars, they are worse, right? So they are on the bottom. <laughs> Lol. Okay, I'll come back to the whole 800 volt hype, by the way, in this video. But okay, let's focus on the, the uh, competition here. So it seems that the G9 is going to take the win to 90% because now the G6 also started throttling and goes quite, quite slow, actually, compared to the G9 even. Wow. Really impressive how the Chinese can make such an affordable car but also offer this fast charging. G9 won to 90%. Wow, over the Germans even, over the Koreans, over the Americans. Holy macaron, the G9 is going for the winning. Uh, now it's going for the, the victory run, just uh, yeah, dr driving circles around the others. They got, G9 is going to go for 100%, whereas the other hasn't even hit 90% yet. Oh, shit. Okay, wait, who, which car is in the slowest? Oh, uh, the Q8 e-tron is the slowest. Holy crap, huh? Really? Even Model S is uh, second slowest. Wow, okay, now Q6 hit 90% finally. And then which car is going to be the third now? Oh, we don't know yet because actually the EV9 is going kind of slow compared to the Model S. What is Tesla going to take the lead? In, in, uh, traditionally, at Tesla, they have been kind of slow in the charging because they use cylindrical cells versus uh, prismatic cells. So. But wow, while we are talking now, uh, the G9 is about to hit 100%. Are you serious? Is this the total humiliation that the G9 will hit 100% before the other cars hit 90%? Oh, shit. <laughs> well, it is so even now before, between the EV9, Model S, and e-tron. Well, I kind of even-ish. Yeah, yeah, it is even. 89%. All right. Model S took the third run, the third win there, and then third place, and then EV9, the fourth. Oh, no, and the Q8 is the slowest to 90%. Oh, wow. Okay, well, the G9 didn't hit 100%, but at least 98% is like, lol. Okay, and now we are waiting for what the heck is going on now. Um, yeah, just hanging out there a little bit. I also charged past 90%, but then in the Q6, I only charged 95% because I had to go. It was going, going kind of slow. But um, yeah, anyway, we can see that, um, yeah, now it doesn't uh, go that slow, um, that, that fast for most cars. So um, 
I think I just want to see how long will it take to go to 100% for the other cars. But okay, I, I think we have seen enough. The, the battle is over. G9 won, but the Q6 on a good second. And if you look at the Johnny curve here, you see that the, the, the G9 hit a higher peak power, but then the Q6 has a more uh, even, a flatter-ish curve. But then overall, yeah, we saw on the, the race that the G9 did win, but uh, this nice little flat curve here, plus whatever here, could actually mean that you can go to, let's say, 50% and still be able to keep up with the G9. Then it boils down to efficiency. So which one is more efficient, the G9 or the Q6 in the 1000 kilometer challenge? Hmm. Well, okay, I uh, need to test that, of course. Uh, I have tested G9 only during winter, not summer. But then what the heck is this? Uh, Model S, okay, Model S hits 250 kilowatt, kind of flat, but then Model S seems to have uh, that more common or the more uh, like an even triangular shape that uh, most batteries should have, right? Whereas uh, some of the others, they go in the zigzag thing here and whatever, I'm not sure what it is with that, but you will also see that, um, for example, MB cars uh, like an ID3 or even the ID uh, yeah, ID4 with the newest battery also follows this similar curve here. And then well, okay, what else is uh, EV9? Okay, EV9 has a nice flat curve. Actually, really flat. Seems like they just flattened it out on purpose. They could, of course, have it more uh, like more like the other cars. And then what is the bottom? Yeah, the, oh, shit, I need to sh highlight this. That all the at the bottom we have the Q8 e-tron. E-tron is slowest of them all. Yeah. The most expensive e-tron charges slowest of them all. So, I mean, yeah, the, the Q8 is nice in many ways. It's just uh, like an updated, well, not really updated. It is more or less like a, the e-tron 55, but with a bigger battery. Other than that, they haven't really updated much. But uh, yeah, it's just bigger battery, heavier, and, uh, and charges slower. <laughs> <laughs> so, so if it matters, charging speed, then you should go for the G6 or, no wait, not G6, Q6 or G9. Yeah, many, so, sorry, sorry, so many Qs and Gs and Es and whatever numbers here. The Q6 has something called bank charging. I mean, what do you do when you charge uh, this 800 volt architecture on 400 volt chargers? So, traditionally, Porsche Taycan has this DC DC converter step up. Uh, I believe it's a step up, which is that it just uh, doubles the, vol uh, the, the voltage from the charger, but with a loss. Uh, but what uh, they have done now in the Porsche Macan and also this uh, Q6 is that they split the battery pack in half. Uh, Tesla Cybertruck can also do that. So now I show you guys a charging session on chem power, which is uh, just happened to be a 400 volt chem power. There are more and more six, uh, more and more 800 volt chem power. But what happens here is that you see that the voltage is 320 volts only. So that's ha roughly half of the. You know, the the full pack but this remember that this is the charging voltage not the resting voltage so which means that the battery pack might be resting around uh, i don't know 270 volt ish and then you're charging at 320 and then it seems like the current is limited to 300 no no no, no. this is um, a little bit uh, bad but uh, initially it was more it was around 370 yeah 375 372 amps and I did actually a charging session on the V4 supercharger, which is also 400 volt base. And now you can see better what's going on. So you see that the, the speed will slowly ramp up on the on the 400 volt or the supercharger because the, the voltage goes up. And uh, other than that, uh, yeah, it's, I mean, why isn't it charging faster? Well, if it could accept 500 amp, it could take more from the supercharger at least 200 uh, kilowatt right instead of 130 oh yeah there was a little blackout there because i forgot to keep the screen awake but uh, you see that um, yeah it charges uh, not so fast on 400 volt but at least it's better than the koreans <laughs> they are even struggling you know ionic uh, 5 and ev6 i think on v3 v4 supercharger they get only around 50 kilowatt they're struggling there on the conversion part or i don't know what the heck is going on there but um, also another thing to highlight is that um, compared to the 800 volt session yeah okay the the 800 volt session goes quite fast but uh, uh, when you want to charge to let's say 95 or almost 100 percent then even the 400 volt session is not that much slower okay now i want to talk a little bit about the 800 volt hype so you know many many people claim that 800 volt is like the new shit that makes the car better uh, and for best for faster charging you need 800 volt well i don't believe so you can still charge pretty fast on 400 volt cars and remember that uh, the fastest cars on the 1000 km challenge, they are 400 volt based. Not only Tesla, we also have EQS, we have uh, some BMW, 
we have yeah, we have some 400 volt cars that charges pretty fast also uh, but then they'll be like oh but you know i learned in school in electronics uh, class that uh, that uh, u equal to r and i and then uh, yeah when you reduce i mean when you increase the voltage you reduce the the current and then that means that uh, the heat loss is lower yeah true but uh, many people they claim that uh, you know 800 volt cars they have a lot less heat loss okay that is true but where is the heat loss it might be in the cable right yeah but then the 800 volt cars they might have a big thicker cable because they need to have uh, more insulation because the voltage is higher uh, versus 400 volt maybe that's why the, the tesla supercharger v3 cables they can be so thin versus uh, 800 volt like ionity you know, they have freaking, freaking chuk, yeah, thick thick cable yeah chuk is uh, in norwegian yeah slip there a little bit my viking uh, but um, but okay enough about that uh, what i heard many times is that uh, 800 volt is wonderful it will make things uh, more efficient again the most efficient cars they are 400 volt like tesla model 3 like uh, like uh, mercedes you know eqe eqs they're extremely efficient also bmw i i4 really efficient you know you can make the car more efficient by using silicon carbide uh, inverters and onboard chargers and and the motors that you can use pm motors you can use some smart decoupling of the front and the rear motor you can have heat scavenging heat pump octaval you know there are plenty of ways to to make the car more efficient oh let's not talk about aerodynamics also and also friction in the drivetrain so the losses in 400 volt architecture versus 800 volt is just a drop in the ocean but okay one thing i wanted to find out was that uh, if you have a 400 volt battery versus the 800 volt battery, how much losses do you have there? And to make the test actually, um, to make it comparable, we had the Q6, which can do bank charging. It, it can switch between 400 volt like in parallel or go in serial mode and go 800 volt. Because if you compare, let's say, a Model 3 versus uh, uh, an EV6 or Ionic 6, they have different chemistry, different cell form factor right so that what i've seen is that the koreans they choose battery packs uh, battery cells that have um, lower internal resistance than tesla tesla they go for cost cutting they go for cylindrical cells because they are cheaper to produce but they have downside in internal resistance and this is what i measured when i went on the autobahn and hammered it with plaid even and other model threes and whatever i tried in the past is that those cylindrical cells they tend to heat up faster than when i tried the ev6 with prismatic cells and different chemistry uh, but then people don't understand this and they claim that no but the reason why ev6 didn't overheat that much as tesla is because it's 800 volt well we have the q6 e-tron so what i did was that i charged on the tesla supercharger it was 400 volt session the, the pack was operating as 400 volt and then i went to a delta charger which is 800 volt you can actually configure the delta to be 400 800 but the delta chargers most of them are 800 volt fortunately and then I charged there, but okay, remember that the, the Tesla was getting 130-ish uh, kilowatt, and then in the Delta charge, I was getting 150 kilowatts. So, of course, when you charge faster, you have more heat buildup, and then the, the cooling needs to run more. But uh, you see that in the Tesla session, I charged from 10 to, to 100% in the Tesla session. It needed 91, 91 kilowatt hour. There might be some uh, decimals here. And in the Delta session, which was charging faster, it needed 92 something kilowatt hour and that makes sense because it was charging a little bit faster but you see if the whole 800 volt type was true and that people claim that 800 volt battery packs they have lower losses then we should have spent less on the delta session right but here it's not like that so my claim is that the cells themselves they don't know if they belong to an 800 volt pack or a 400 volt and the heat loss you have within the cells they are the same you just arrange the cells differently to get 800 volt so can we now kill that myth please yeah okay thank you very much and now i'm gonna go home and uh, get some sleep so that's gonna be it for now i hope you guys enjoyed this video as always thank you for watching and talk to you later